What's up, everybody? Welcome to day five of 21 Days of Prayer. Uh, I am Aaron. This I'm is Michelle. Yeah, that's Michelle. Uh, we are going through in this this week. I know we've kind of unpacked this a couple of times, but if you're new to what we're doing, we are in this series taking some time to pray mm -hmm. and uh, to get back into a rhythm of prioritizing our relationship with God through prayer. Yeah. And in this time, this 21 days, we're focusing on like the attributes of who mm -hmm. God is. So, so we're talking about his character, his nature, and mm -hmm. today we're talking about how God is omnipotent. All right. So that's an important one. Michelle, what does omnipotent mean? Omnipotent is really simple. It just means he's all powerful mm -hmm. and he has no limits. Mm -hmm. And I, this is an amazing attribute of God when you think about it, because we've gone over the other ones. Like he's, um, what is that? Uh, um, omnipresent and he's, uh, what all the words escape me now. Um, but he's everywhere, you know, but it's like God created the world. So why can't he do everything? And I think that's what kind of uh, what the scripture verse are describing here. Job talks about it. You know, God formed the mountains. He formed the sea. There is nothing that God cannot do. That's right. Um, but I love how when you think about that and you think about God's attributes and God is telling you who he is. He also has not so much boundaries that he gives himself, but he's like, if I say I'm going to do this, I won't do the opposite of what I'm going to oh, do. Right. And I love that about God because he shows us how to set boundaries for ourselves. Right. If we say we are going to do something, we should do it. Right. And I love this example of God being all powerful because he's like, dude, there's nothing I can't do. That's right. But I choose right. not to do certain things. Right. Right. And I that, love that about him. That he has power, but he's also, um, Jesus is described as meek, right? Mm -hmm. And meekness is having power, but not using the full, full, full right. force of that power. It's, it's, yeah, I can, but I'm not gonna. Right. In this case, because it's better for me to not do that. Right. And. But yeah. this, this all powerful thing is, I don't know. I think people struggle with that. I think it's hard too, because you have, you have two different sides of, of Christianity. You have the one Christianity that wants to talk about how God is loving and God is merciful. And yes, he is all those oh, things. Sure, yeah. um, but God is also all powerful. So then you have those people of hellfire and brimstone. Sure. Of God is going to come and smite you with a rod of lightning. Yeah, he's if a you big do judge something, guy. Right. Yeah. That, you, that you do something wrong and this is what God's going to do. But that's not exactly what God's saying he's going to do because he gives us the opportunities to correct ourselves, to better ourselves, because he wants us to be more like him. Right. And and so, again, this is where, again, God shows boundaries and learning things. But um, there's nothing to be afraid of with God because he created you. Right. And he loves you. So why would he want to destroy you? Right. And I think that's the one thing we miss most of all is that God does not, God does not have evil intended for us. He has good intended for us. Mm. And just because he's all powerful, doesn't mean he's going to destroy you. It means he wants to show you what he's capable of doing, what he's capable of doing in your life. Because so many times we leave God out of our life right. and then things go wrong. And then we're like, God, where are you in this? And he, and he is gracious enough to go here. Let me show you. Like, I love the story of Elijah and the Baal prophets. God showed his power there. Yep. You know, he's like, dude, go ahead and put up your altars and let's see if your gods can light this altar on fire. And the Baal worshipers are trying. They did everything. They cut themselves. They mutilated themselves and their gods did not light that offering. Right. And then God comes in and he goes, Elijah, here's what I want you to do. And so Elijah starts having people pour tons of water. Oh, yeah. Dousing everything so nothing could be lit. And then God just comes and consumes it. Like, I love the fact that God loves to show off his power. Sure. Like, if anyone could say they could be boastful, it's God. <laughs> it's God. It is <laughs> it's God. God. It is I, God. I love it. Like, you look at Moses uh, and the 10 plagues of Egypt. Yeah. Like, he wanted to show... The, he wanted to show Pharaoh. He wanted to show the Egyptians. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. My, I am bigger than your gods. Mm -hmm. And it's an example to us to realize that even though there's things going on in our lives, God is bigger than those things. Oh, come on, he Michelle. is more powerful than those things that we have going on, things that are coming against us. And he's proven it time and time again. Sure. And so realizing that attribute is looking at it at a different way of, okay, I don't have to do this. God can do it. Mm -hmm. Why not, since God has all the power and I don't have that much, why don't I just give it to him? Right. And it's a form of surrender. Okay, yep. God, you said you were this, therefore I give it to you. I'm going to go ahead and go. Michelle's got this. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Seriously, that's so good. You're right. It's true. But I, but there's another side of that coin. Mm -hmm. God is all powerful 
And we know that God is all powerful, but I think there's some people that get hurt by the fact that God is all powerful. Mm -hmm. If God is all powerful, why did my wife die of cancer? Mm -hmm. If God is all powerful, why are their kids starving in Africa? Mm -hmm. If God is all powerful and he can do these things, it's, it's the, the, the argument against him, mm -hmm. but all powerful is not his only attribute. No. There's so much more to him that his all powerfulness is, yes, that is who he is. He has all power. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And he didn't do that with his hands. He spoke it into existence. Yes, he's powerful and he can do anything. There's nothing that's impossible for him. And yet he withholds that mm -hmm. at times, that he is also wise. Mm -hmm. He is also all knowing. He also knows the beginning from the end. He knows when his power is needed and when it is not. And when it's our responsibility to step up and act versus mm -hmm. his his responsibility to step up and act. It's also part of him knowing what it is we need. I, I said this already, and I say this all the time rather, is that God cares more about our character than he does our comfort. And so yeah. he will withhold his power. It's not that he is unable to, it's that there's something he needs us to experience in order to mold and shape us. And unfortunately, right. tragedies in life, we're, we're in a sinful fallen world. And the second that that happened, everything went on a downward, downward spiral. And so cancer exists, death exists, mm -hmm. all these things that are painful to us. And yet, yes, God is all powerful. He could stop all of these things. He's not going to. Right. This is the consequences of mm -hmm. our humanity and of our sinfulness right. and but there is an answer mm -hmm. to all of those things. And it's found in Jesus. And the fact that we can come to God and yeah. say, hey, I'm in need that this is how things are. I'd rather this not be the mm -hmm. case, but I trust you. Well, mm -hmm. that's the right place to be, right? right. That's where Jesus was right. in the Garden of Gethsemane is that, God, you're all powerful. God, Jesus even came to this earth knowing he was going to die. Mm -hmm. He knew he was going to die. He knew right. what the plan was. And he gets here and he meets all these people and he spends time with them. And his humanity is now on display. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. Dad, if you can do this another way, mm -hmm. let this pass for me. However, I trust you. And so Jesus even goes to the cross for us. God, who is all powerful, doesn't even stop it. Nor does Jesus. Right. And, and as, as you were saying, it. though, it's because God knew the end from the beginning. Exactly. So God knew that had he had stopped that, mm -hmm. there would have been no redemption. Yep. So that's another thing to look at is that um, in Psalms, it says that, you know, I think it's Psalms or no, 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 it's Isaiah. Isaiah says um, that my ways are higher than your ways oh, yeah. as, um, and my thoughts more so than your thoughts. Sure. So again, he sees things that we don't see. Correct. And again, it's not so much God has boundaries, but God placed boundaries for a reason because he has other attributes. He has other things that he's trying to show us. Yep. And he, in the Bible, it even says God gave us free will. So we have that and our free will created a fallen world. Yeah. So as you were saying, there's consequences to the actions. God said, if you do this, this is what happens. There are moments when God does step in and say, okay, enough is enough. Absolutely. But do we have the answer for when God's going to do that and how God's going to do that all the time? No, we don't. Because again, we don't see the end from the beginning. We are one small piece of a puzzle and we only see our portion of it, but there's a bigger puzzle that's going on. Yeah. And so the only thing, as you were saying, that we can do is say, okay, God, you know about this. I need to give this to you. I need to surrender this to you. Just like Jesus did. God, if there is any other way, take this cup from me. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. God, if there is any other way, take this cup from me, but not my will, your will be done. Absolutely. And sometimes what happens is that what we want to have happen doesn't happen. For sure. Not always an answer as to why, because again, um, and you look at the attributes of God that we'll be going over. God is all knowing. Right. Again, he's, he's the beginning. He's the end. And technically there was no beginning for him. So no, not exactly. So put your mind around that. Yeah. But yeah. So we can't just look at this one attribute and right. say, this is all that God is because it's not, we can't allow that to offend us. Right. Knowing that God is omnipotent, that he's all powerful should lead us to turn to him and do what my, my wristband says. And that is to pray first. We always ought to come to God with everything that is concerning mm -hmm. to us. That doesn't mean that the circumstance is going to change. It just means, hey, we are trusting you. Mm -hmm. And that's what that, that, you know, that omnipotence should inspire us to come to him, not keep us away from him because right. we didn't get what we wanted from the right. vending machine version of God. Right. We think that he is, and that's not who God is. So now this is a really good one. This is an important one. I don't think a lot of people struggle with the idea of God being omnipotent. I think mm -hmm. they struggle with the, the, the idea of God being all powerful and not doing what they want him to do. Right. 
and this is where we have to learn to trust him that all the other attributes we're going to talk about throughout this will inspire us to help right. us know that he is good that he's faithful he's all these other things right. but yes he's all powerful but he's so much more than that and mm -hmm. if we're only coming to him to get what we want from right. him to fix all of our situations to make everything better are we really in the kind of relationship that God desires for us right. anyway? It's more transactional that right. way. It's, it's a not, genie God. And yeah. That's not, we don't serve genies. We do not serve a genie God or a vending machine God. No. Nope. Okay. Well, let's bring this to a point. Let's pray. Uh, you want to pray us out? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. God, I just thank you so much for another day of just learning about who you are. I feel like in today's society, we just, we try to figure ourselves out, but sometimes we just don't want to figure you out. And God, mm -hmm. I just thank you that we are learning these attributes about you. We are learning your about your holiness and, and um, your graciousness and your mercy mm -hmm. and who you are as a being. Mm -hmm. God, I just thank you that we get to worship you in this, that we get to be in awe of you over all of this. And God, I pray right now that even if we are struggling in those moments where we are going through a situation and if we're saying, God, you are all powerful. Why, why, why? You're not saying don't question. You're not saying don't ask why, but you're saying trust me. And God, I just pray that we can trust you mm -hmm. in those moments when we are struggling to see you as a good God, mm -hmm. as, a, as a gracious God, as a loving God. God, I just pray that... Um, if those things that are going on around us right now, God, that we can surrender it all to you, put it in back into your hands and say, God, you are all powerful. You are all knowing and you take control. Jesus, you take the wheel as that song says. Mm -hmm. God, I just pray right now that if there's things going on, I rebuke it, uh, Satan's attack right now. God, I just thank you that you are guiding. You are, you are proving yourself mighty just as you did with Elijah mm -hmm. and the Baal prophets, just as you did with Moses and Egypt and God in every single story that you have shown us in the Bible of your power and your might. God, I just thank you that we can see that. We can see that in the little things, God, and that you reveal it to us in the big things mm -hmm. that we see it. Even if it's not an our lives, God, that we see it happening in this world, that no matter what this world is going through, no matter what we are going through, we are seeing your hand move and move mightily and powerfully through all of this. God, I just pray as we go through the rest of today that we can magnify you and praise you because that is why you're telling us who you are. Mm -hmm. So we can sing your praises. We can magnify you and we can glorify you. And I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. That's day five. We're just getting this train rolling, yeah. so make sure you come back with us for day six and all the days up through day 21. Mm. Be with us. Share this uh, content on your social media. You can also text to people as well. Mm -hmm. Comment below uh, about God's power and how maybe how it's worked in your life. Yeah. But also, you can comment your prayer requests or click the link for the Connect card, and uh, you can submit those prayer requests privately, and our pastoral team will be praying for you as well. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.